debating. Today I'd like to talk about arguments and support. And first we're still trying to think about the best proposal, so please just try to remember what are the criteria for a good proposal. There are five of them, I think. Um, needs to be uh, clear, controversial. We need to split some people for, some people against. Um, it should be interesting, of course. Uh, it should be objective. So we don't want something that's a matter of taste. We don't want something that's a fact. We need something that we can have logical arguments and reasons for or against. Um, and the other thing, we want something that advocates change. Uh, there's no point debating if something is happening already or if we know something already. So um, have a think about the best proposal for debating in this class. What do you think is the best proposal for debating in this, in this class? And why should we debate that particular proposal? Are you for or against? Um, and why? Why are you for or why are you against? Um, and the why we're going to talk about today, and this is what you need. When we've chosen a proposal, we next need three things to help us debate. The first thing is we need arguments. Um, arguments are the reasons why we are for or the reasons why we are against. We also need support, which I'll talk about later. And um, we also need counter arguments. So when we're debating, um, debating, there are two different teams debating against each other. And if you are in this team, you need to know what this team is going to say so that you can then have a counter argument to attack their arguments. So this is another thing you need to think about. But first, let's think about arguments. Um, arguments are the reasons why you are for or the reasons why you are against. And I'll just give you some examples from this, this proposal, um, soccer is better than baseball. Uh, first argument, um, soccer is easier to understand than baseball. Um, second argument, here's another argument, soccer is better exercise than baseball. Uh, let's just think about these two arguments. Let's think about the pr proposal. And which team do you think would use these arguments? Um, remember, there are two teams. There's a for team and an against team. Which team would say soccer is easier to understand than baseball? Which team would say soccer is better exercise than baseball? Um, I'm not asking your opinion. I'm not asking whether you agree or disagree. I'm just asking in a debate which team is likely to use this argument. Um, and let's just look at these arguments. Let's look at the easy to understand argument. We're going to call this argument F1. F is for four and it's argument number one for the four team. Um, and if we just take it to, to pieces, we have two parts to this. First of all is that sports should be easy to understand. The second part is that soccer is easier to understand than baseball. Um, therefore, soccer is better. Now, if we want to attack this argument, there are two places we can attack it. Uh, we can attack sports should be easy to understand. Perhaps this is not true. If this is not true, this argument does not work. Um, and perhaps it is true that sports should be easy to understand, but perhaps we can attack the idea that soccer is easier to understand than baseball. Perhaps it's not. Perhaps we can argue that baseball is easier to understand or that soccer is not easier to understand. So if we can attack either part of this, then we can attack the argument. Um, Similarly, exercise, the exercise, this is also an argument that the four team is likely to use. And um, again, this has two parts to it. First of all, exercise is good for you. And secondly, that soccer is better exercise than baseball. Um, and therefore, soccer is better than baseball. 
So again, we have two parts to the argument. There are two places that we can attack if we're on the against team. Um, here are two more arguments. Um, the next argument is um, everyone bats in baseball. The next argument is that baseball uses more skills than soccer. Um, how about these arguments? Are they for um, or against? And um, how do they work? And here are some more um, here are some more arguments for you to think about. Um, soccer is more popular around the world. It's easier to get points in baseball. We don't know how long a baseball game will last. Players don't foul in baseball. And many women play soccer. Uh, so are these arguments for or against? Um, please have a think about that. And uh, let's move on to arguments then. So whatever we're debating, we need to come up with some arguments for our side of the debate. Um, arguments are often um, either moral or practical. So they're either looking at a principle, something is good, for example, um, for example, equality is good. It's good if everything is fair and everybody is equal. That's a principle. Um, application, um, if people do exercise, they'll be more healthy. If they're more healthy, um, they'll be able to do more. They won't get sick. They'll have a happier life. That's perhaps more application. Uh, so we generally, we're looking at these two kinds of arguments. Another thing to think about when you're thinking about your proposal and trying to think of arguments, um, why is this important? Why is this proposal important? There may be an argument there. Um, what's wrong with the status quo? The status quo is the situation now. Uh, what problems do we have now that we need to fix? And perhaps your proposal can fix these problems. And what will happen after we change? So if we take your proposal, uh, if we put your proposal into practice, um, how will things get better? What will we be able to do? These are things to think about when you're thinking of arguments. Next, once you have an argument, you need support. And um, support can be quantitative, quantitative, or qualitative, quant qualitative, quanti support can be based around numbers or can be based around examples. So uh, we've got facts, we've got statistics, we've got evidence, or we can have examples, we can have expert opinions, um, we can have stories, anecdotes that can support our arguments. Um, in simple terms, we can look at four basic kinds of support. Uh, explanation, example, data, or expert opinion. Uh, most support is one of these four kinds. Um, so let's look back at our four arguments. In fact, let's just look back at two of these arguments. Um, here's argument one, soccer is easier to understand than baseball, and soccer is better exercise than baseball. Um, so here we have, here we have um, two arguments, and I'm going to show you some support, and I'd like you to think what kind of support is this, and which of these two arguments uh, is the support supporting. So let's just look at the um, let's just look at the first support. Last week we did a survey of 30 students in our class. We asked the question which sport is easier to understand soccer or baseball? 
25 out of 30 students chose soccer. So what kind of support do you think this is? Is this explanation, example, data, expert opinion? Uh, well, it's got numbers in, so it's probably data. And um, which argument do you think this is supporting? Um, easy to understand or exercise? It's probably supporting the easy to understand argument. So this is um, this support here is data, and it's supporting the uh, the first argument that soccer is easier to understand than baseball. Uh, next, then, another bit of support. Um, Brian Grasso, the founder of the International Youth Association, ranked soccer number one in an internet article, Sports All Kids Should Play, in 2008. He says that soccer provides children wonderful athletic exercise. So, um, which kind of support is this, do you think? And which argument do you think it's supporting? Well, I think this is probably expert opinion, and it looks like it's supporting the ex the exercise argument. So expert opinion for the exercise argument. Um, there's another two bits of support I'm going to show you. I'd like you to think about which kind of support they are and which argument they are supporting. I once tried to introduce my friend from Australia to baseball. However, I had to explain so many rules, such as balls, strikes, foul balls, the strike zone, tagging up, and forced plays, that I finally gave up. Soccer is much easier to understand. If you watch a baseball game, you will see that players are standing around most of the time. However, in soccer, all the players, except for the keeper, are moving and running almost the whole game. So how about those how about those arguments then? How about those bits of support? Are they explanation, example, data, or expert opinion? Um, are they the first argument? Are they supporting easy to understand or are they supporting exercise? Which one are they supporting? Um, so those are different kinds of argument. Those are different kinds of support. The next thing to think about then that's very important is some um, sources. So in order to support an argument, you need to get information from somewhere. And we need to know where your information comes from. Uh, you can't just say, well, I think that won't win a debate. You need to get support from where you get your thoughts from. Everybody has thoughts. Everybody thinks something. Um, and in a debate, you need more. And you need to know more specifically who said, um, who said this? Who said, who said it? And what exactly did they say? Where did they say it? And when did they say it? Um, another thing to think about, which I'll come to a bit later, is why did they say this? So let's just look at this bit of support here. Um, and we can see um, who said it was Brian Grasso. What did he say? Or who is Brian Grasso? He's the founder of the International Youth Association. What did he say? He ranked soccer number one. Um, where did he say this? In um, ezines.com. And when did he say this? 2008. That's, that's quite a long time ago, isn't it? 2000. That's some, a few years ago. And um, ezines.com. Who, who? Anyway, we'll come back to them. We'll come back to that later. But first of all, you need to give this information. Um, who said it? What did they say? Where did they say it? When did they say it? And these are some examples of sources. Um, of course, uh, we can read books. We can look at journals. 
uh, newspapers are sources, people are sources, um, but when we're using people for sources, um, my friend Taror may not be the best source. So when we're giving a person, why, why should we trust this person? It needs to be, well, we've said expert before and um, expert opinion is worth something. My friend's opinion <laughs> is maybe not worth so much. Um, so we need to think about who, who are they and why should we trust them. Um, the easiest place to find support is the internet. Um, so we can, we can find most information we can find on the internet, most support we can find on the internet. Um, however, we can also find a lot of rubbish on the internet that is not very good support or is not support at all. So when we are looking on the internet, we have to look very carefully. And um, I'm just going to show you a few sources. And all of these sources, there is um, something wrong. Um, these are all looking at a proposal about school lunch. Um, and all children should have a school lunch rather than a PAX lunch. And I'd like to look at these sources and just see if you can think what may be wrong with these sources. Um, Here's the first one. That's the URL for the source. Um, here is the source. What's wrong with it? Um, next one. Here's the source. What's wrong with this source? Um, and here's the next one. Here's another source. And what is wrong with this source? Uh, let's just go back and have a look, another look at these. Um, so this one is, um, this is, um, there's a lot of this on the internet and who is saying this? Uh, we've got you, 1999 die, and Lady Frankincense. Um, who are these people? I have no idea who these people are. It could be an elementary school student. It could be my grandmother. Um, we don't know who they are. We can't really use this information as support for a debate. Next, um, this is a religious website, and um, this is not really giving us support for a debate about school lunches. Um, there's nothing wrong with religion. Religion is not, is not bad, um, but... I think sometimes we have to think of why is this web page here and is it trying to give support for evidence, for data, for a debate about school lunch? And this is probably not. This is probably trying to um, encourage people to go to a church. Um, I, I'm not making a judgment whether that's good or bad. It's just not support for a debate. Um, this is, um, this is a politician, um, and again, there's nothing wrong with politicians. Um, politicians are wonderful. Um, however, they may not be the best place to get support for a debate. This is an opinion. Um, politicians often are trying to get you to vote for them. Um, so we can't really use politicians' websites as evidence or support for a debate. So a lot of the time when we're looking at websites, we have to think about whose website is this. And um, 
we can tell, here's an example of a website, and before we even read what's on the website, we can get a lot of information from the URL. So for example, this URL tells us, um, we can see um, our city, Higashikurume, lg.jp. Well, the .jp tells us that this is in Japan. Um, LG is local government. So this is a local government website in Japan. Which local government? Well, it's Higashikurume City. Um, and that's a good sign. Uh, local governments, we're trying to find support for a debate about school dinners, about school lunches. And local governments make school lunches. So probably this will have useful information, um, factual information about school lunches. Um, we can also tell um, that uh, the, it says uh, Tugaku Kyusyoku. So we can tell that their, their English may not be very good, or it's a Japanese website, which is uh, interesting. Um, and so, sure enough, here we have, um, this is about what they actually do when they're making school lunches. So this gives us some factual, useful factual information. Probably this has good information about the nutrition, so what goes into school lunches and why they may be good nutritionally. So this is probably a useful website. Um, similarly, this is uh, Noboribetsu, um, ed.jp. So um, ed is a board of education. So again, this is an official site of a board of education. Boards of education are responsible for how the schools are run. So again, probably this has useful information for our debate. Um, however, so that, so this is good, this is probably better than the other ones. Um, however, there is a problem. All of these websites had a problem. Um, and the problem is that they were all in Japanese. Now, this is an English lesson, and you are here for your English and to improve your English. Your homework is not to search the internet in Japanese that will not help your English. Uh, your homework is to use English. So I'd like you to find when you're looking for support and when you're looking for sources, search in English. Um, I know this is difficult. Welcome to university. So um, just to recap, the kinds of support are um, explanation, um, example, data, and expert opinion. And you're going to hopefully find some support and research for support for the arguments of the interesting debate proposals that we're going to debate. So when you're researching, um, first of all, uh, choose controversial proposals. So when you're looking for a proposal to find research about, let's just look at the ones that are controversial, the proposals that have arguments or reasons for and against. Um, the other thing then is to try to find evidence. Don't look on the internet for arguments. Think of the arguments yourself. So look at the proposal. Are you for or against? Why are you for or why are you against? And then write down the argument in English. Write down your reason to be for or your reason to be against in English. And then start thinking, well, how do I support this? What information do I need to support my argument? And probably you'll have a research question. So there's something, some information you're trying to find out. Again, write that down in English. Um, and then when you're researching, when you're looking on the internet, try to think of where you might find the answer. So what kind of website are you looking for? Um, for example, if you want to know, maybe talking about soccer and baseball, 
One of the arguments for soccer being better is that baseball, the equipment is more expensive. So how much does a baseball glove cost? Well, uh, a good place to find the answer may be Amazon.com. They sell baseball gloves. So we can go there. That's a good place to find information about the cost of a baseball glove. Um, it may not be good a good place to find information about school dinners or other proposals. So you need to think about the proposal, think about your argument, and think about what information you want and who has that information. So when you're looking at websites, um, think about whose website is it. Forums and blogs are usually are usually not good places to find support. Unless it's it's a forum or a blog of an expert, unless you know this person is an expert in this area, this is their blog, um, in which case that's fine. Um, generally, um, don't use forums or blogs. Um, do use, if it's .gov, it's a government website, we can probably trust the government. If it's .ac, it's a university, it's a university website. We can probably trust people from universities. Um, if it's .ed, .edu is an educational, also educational site. So look at the look at the um, if it's .com, it's a company, and if it's a company, they may be trying to sell you something. So this may, they may have good information. They may have good information, but just remember um, whose website is it, and what are they trying to do on their website. Um, don't use Wikipedia for your support. Uh, Wikipedia is not primary information. The information on Wikipedia comes from somewhere else. And you can go, you can look at the bottom. There should be links, there should be references. You can go back and trace the original information. And the original source may be a good source, but don't just put Wikipedia, I read in Wikipedia. Wikipedia is mostly correct. Wikipedia is not bad. Wikipedia is mostly reliable. But when you're debating, you need to go one more step and find out where Wikipedia's information came from. Um, and search in English. Um, search in English. First of all, it's, this is an English lesson. Um, secondly, if you search in English, you'll find information. There'll be more information available from searching in English. Uh, so, just to summarise what you need to do, um, choose a controversial proposal. Choose or think of an argument. You could look at an argument somebody else has written and find support for their argument. Um, write down your research question in English and then go onto the internet, search for support, uh, search for data search for expert opinions, search for examples or anecdotes. Um, and here's an example. So this is an example research question. Um, the argument is uh, baseball is more expensive. So your research question is um, how much does a baseball glove cost? Um, and as I suggested, uh, go to Amazon. You can find out the cost of a baseball baseball glove. In that case, Amazon is a perfectly good reference. Um, next one, um, soccer is easier to understand. So your research question is, um, how many rules does soccer have? Uh, and where might you find this information? Um, the website for a soccer club may be able to tell you how many rules soccer has. Um, another argument then, soccer is more popular. Uh, so the research questions might be, how many soccer teams are there in the world? And how many baseball teams are there in the world? Uh, if we look at the numbers of supporters, we can find, um, find that information too. Uh, soccer has more fouls. Um, so the research question may be, how many, how many yellow cards and red cards were given in the last World Cup? How many people are injured in baseball each year? We can try and get data like this. 
so another um, argument is that soccer is better exercise. So we may want to find how many kilometers does a soccer player run in a game? Uh, where can we find this information? Um, uh, you don't know when a baseball game will end. Um, oh, here's a counter argument. So a counter argument to this is that um, soccer games can also go to penalties. Uh, so um, if you're looking for evidence, for counter evidence, um, how many soccer games end in penalties? Uh, you can find a source for your counter argument. So sources, you must tell us um, who said it, the name of the person or the organization, what exactly did they say? And you may want to use quote, quote, unquote. If you're giving the exact words that they said, you must use quotation marks. Um, where did they say it? So give us the website, the newspaper, the book title. And when did they say it? So you must also give us a date. Um, so here are some examples. This is the kind of thing you need to write when you're writing down your support. Um, so for penalties then, according to data from FIFA website, 19.5% of World Cup knockout matches ended in a penalty shootout between 1986 and 2014. Half the games at the World Cup and league matches do not end in penalties. Um, so, there you go. That's evidence about penalties. Um, this is evidence about running. So, Matsumoto Yamaga, Matsumoto Yamaga, which is a football club, um, their official website shows that the average player ran 9.3 kilometers per game in the 2016 season. This is um, so we've got the evidence here. We've got the who who said this Matsumoto Yamaga's website. What did they say? Um, the average player ran 9.3 kilometers. When did they say it? 2016. And where did they say it? We've got their website. Um, and FIFA website said that 19.5% of World Cup knockout matches end in a penalty. Um, and there's a date for when they said this. And there's also a link so we know where it's from. It's from the FIFA website. So make sure we've got um, who, what, where, when. Um, don't forget then to um, search in English. Uh, choose websites carefully. Uh, there are a lot of websites out there that we cannot trust. Um, there are there are many that we can trust. The important thing is to know whether we can trust a website or not. And you need to think about this, not just for this lesson, but um, to be to know what's happening right now. You need to think about websites and what can you trust. Um, and why can you trust it? So when you're adding this, don't forget to get the URL from the website. Uh, when you're writing a message, uh, think about the title of your post. Um, as we get more sources and more arguments, some of these threads will get quite long. And it would be very helpful if the title of your post tells us, are you for or against? Um, is this a uh, support? Is this an argument? Which argument is it? Um, and if you can think about the title, uh, that will be very helpful. Um, also, when you're thinking about the title, try to make it as short as possible. So if you can think of a short name for the argument, like just exercise, then that will help us when we're looking through the titles. Um, and look for examples, data, expert opinion. Um, don't look for arguments. Think of the arguments yourself or look at the arguments other people in this class have added into the forum. Um, there is still time to add another proposal. And um, if there are no arguments against, we don't need to add another argument for. If nobody's against, then it may not be controversial after all. Um, so, uh, referencing formats then. Um, there are different, when you're writing, uh, this is relevant when you start to write papers, uh, but be aware 
be aware of this um, as you will have to write some papers and when you're writing later in this class you, you'll need to write something at some point and there are different kinds of format um, I usually use APA format um, and if it's APA um, this is how the format should be written um, so we have all the information we've got the name we've got the year we've got the article title We've got the journal, so which journal was this printed in, um, and the volume number or the issue number and the pages where it is. So we can go, this means that we can go back and easily find where your information comes from um, if we want to check the information or read more about your source. Um, if it's a book, again, the name of the writer, the year it was published, the title and the publisher. Um, and if it was so in general it's who when what and then title and then where is the journal or the publisher uh, just an example of Vancouver then this, these are examples of Vancouver style which is a different style this is used in the Lancet which is a medical journal um, here are a couple of answers of that which again it's, it's a slightly different it has the same information it's got the name of the writers it's got the title it's got the name of the journal, it's got the year, so it's got the date in there, and the page, the journal number and the page numbers. Um, so good luck, and I look forward to seeing lots of arguments, lots of support, and to see where the source is for that support is.